Leftover paint on a used sign. How's that for cost effectiveness? Mm -hmm. We got black. I don't know why I have two tubs of leftover black. It's just because I don't pay attention to my stash now, do I? White. Got a bit of aqua. Deep sapphire. Amethyst and cobalt, even though you can't read that label very well because it's got green on it from somewhere. Going to use a beaker. Of course, I can't remember how many ounces this is. 100 milliliters. Someone know how many ounces that is? I think it's like three or four or something like that. I need about two ounces of paint to cover this little sucker. Right. Nice little bit of white. Just give a fair dollop of that on the, the white there. Give it a little drizzle on top there. Not a lot of that, so tread lightly, yes. Folk art, amethyst. I do love, bought a ton of this. And our pretty, pretty cobalt all over there. Generous dollop of black. Try not to use a ton of black because it drowns things. I don't know about putting this deep sapphire so close to the black just because they're both going to make it dark. But that'll be sparkly dark. Amethyst. I'm going to do a touch of the white in here just because I feel like it. Actually, I think I'm going to dirty pour that white in because I almost did anyway. Whoa, don't. Drop the blue. Sometimes I catch the handles on these spoons and over goes my paint. That's unfortunate. Okay, I am going to put more of this white. And then I'm going to put the rest of the deco art deep sapphire this color dirty pour the rest of this cobalt in there not actually sinking below the surface very well. Because <laughs> it wants to be difficult. The rest of the white, which is a fairly thin white because I made it for a swipe, I think, a while back. And swipe colors like to be thin. Okay, so I'm going to put a good amount of this black because I'm just going to, it's just going to be what gets poured out and goes off the edge and I don't mind the edge being black. In fact, I think that is an attractive possibility. Okay, so three-ish ounces of paint here, I think. We're going to ring pour it. Let's ring that thing.
it's kind of just gotten a little messy in the center instead of ringy. Of course. Let's see if I can chase some of that off of there. I don't necessarily like what that side is doing right now. I do kind of think I like the look of this though, so I'm going to try to open that up a little and see if that impresses me at all. Over our corners, because our corners are happier when they're covered. like that opening up more. It's got an interesting little stripey effect from the turquoise. That's kind of cool. what all this is doing. Mm. Looks like I might have a lump. Not sure. I don't know if I can get it out of there without... There it is. Don't know what that was. Sliver or something. Trying to coax the way of the paint from over here in the corner. It's about here now. Trying to go and push a little bit of that away and off so that the corner's covered. The way the paint's now coming up on that corner. Alright, give it a little pinch just to push that paint in the right place. figure out what I'm doing with this corner. Okay, I'm going to drag this a little bit just so that the corner is covered a little better and I can play with the composition a little more. I think I do want more of this white sitting closer to the center than to the edge here. So I'm going to kind of just push it right back towards that corner and let this white hopefully come out and spread out more, more towards the, the center for visual interest. I'm 
trying to decide if it's nicely subtle or just too subtle. Let's torch it and see if it changes. There's some cells. Okay, yeah, it's getting some texture to it now. we are with a wet result. I do really like what that torching did to it. I guess I really just like stuff that kind of looks vaguely spacey. But the torching, you can see, brought up all of these little tiny textury bits that just give it a lot of depth and I really like that. I do like what the cells and the white is doing playing in there. You can kind of see all the different colors that are in there, even though it is subtle. I will admit it is subtle. I think I like subtle. I do like what this white is doing in here. And that sort of meteory, showery looking texture of cells right there is pretty cool. I don't know that... Ooh, we're out of focus. Focus! Focus, focus, focus! <laughs> there we go. Nice and focused. Just haven't had your coffee yet. Hang around for when it's dried. Pretty little repurposed plaque. Now I think what I'm going to do is I am going to see about experimenting more with leaving my paint thicker so that I get more effects because if I'm seeing it right I'm stretching the hell out of some of the prettier parts of what's going on in the paintings. So that's uh, that's against what I'm actually trying to do. And I ain't gonna do it anymore. Well, he's gonna try. You know, I'll screw it up for a while, but eventually I'll figure it out. Because the. A lot of the multicolored and depth parts of this painting are like right here in this section, and I think there would have been more of that. I'm trying to get my finger out of the shadow. <laughs> We are now working with natural light because the sun is a part of my life again. Hooray! But anyway, what I was saying, I think a lot of the depth is right in this area. And I think it would have been a lot more spread out had I not stretched everything off in making this piece. So we are going to experiment and see and kind of probably flirt with the idea of leaving too much paint on the canvas for a while and seeing if anything cracks. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.